Hey guys, so today I'm going to tell you about how I sharpen my chainsaw chains with the Granberg File and Joint Chainsaw Chain Sharpener. So to start off, I'm going to just show you around the sharpener a little bit. Your angle adjustment will go to pre-selected uh, 5 degree intervals on there. So. 35 degrees, 30 degrees, 25, etc, etc, and then it'll swing all the way around to the other side as well for getting your your uh, cutters at the opposite side. So generally it's going to be at probably a 30, 35 degree for your average chainsaw chain. There's also an angle adjustment that goes in this direction as well. I have never used that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the application of that would be for, but you also have that option as well. Then over here, you have your height adjustment, and that adjusts how high your file is. That is just something you can kind of feel when it sets into that cutter when it's at the right height. This uh, wing screw wing bolt whatever is what uh, goes in and holds it against the bar and then right here on either side we have these little allen screws and those are what push these little pieces in right here and that's what keeps your chain from wobbling back and forth when you're sharpening because you'll be either pulling or pushing depending on which direction you have your file in here against the chain and that will prevent it from having that side-to-side -side motion. Right under here, this is sort of a, uh, a backstop that will push against this bar right here. And that will help to make sure that all your cutters only go back to the same depth. So that way you don't have one cutter that's that deep, another one that's that deep. It will help regulate the depth of that. So that just screws in and out to have sort of a backstop for that and then you also it has a hinge back here so that way when you are going in between uh, your cutters you can kind of lift that up out of the way and then set it down and then you have your stop right here which you back your cutter up against to hold it in the same place every time so why did I choose this particular chain sharpener. For one, this is one of the, probably the cheaper ones out there, uh, mainly because it's not electric. I opted against electric because they were, for one, more expensive. Uh, two, because when you're using an electric sharpener with the, the wheel on it, it heats up your cutters and from what I've heard, it can affect the, the temper in your chain. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it sounded good to me. And it gave me a reason to not buy the more expensive one. I also feel that I can get a better edge on the cutters with this than I can get taking it to the local small engine uh, shop and having them sharpen it on their electric sharpener and like I said this is way cheaper I think when I bought this I don't know five or six years ago it was maybe around 20 25 bucks the cheapest local place to get your chain sharpened cost I believe is seven dollars per chain so you can do the math on that and figure it out that it doesn't take very long before you have easily paid for this small device right here. Uh, your only recurring cost is for your files, but you can get several uses out of each one of those before having to replace those, and they aren't all that expensive, but compared to having them done somewhere, this obviously is way cheaper. Uh, it takes me about, I want to say, 15 to 20 minutes to do a chain, and that is doing the cutters, 
as well as filing these down as well using one of these gauges or these it's they're, they're, they both do the same thing and you can get these in different different depths this is 0 0.025 inches uh, you can get them I think this is one of the shallower ones you can get them deeper than that as well but that's all dependent on the size saw you have and how much bite And as I was about to say before the memory filled up, you'll take a few strokes on each one and then you'll, you'll kind of have to figure out according to your chain how many you need to do and how dull it is. Then you're going to skip the next cutter because that one's going in the opposite direction. And then come to this one, make sure it's backed up against that little that stop right there. And then bring it down do however many strokes you need on there and it should be the same number of strokes on each one uh, and then once you have gone all the way around you should be able to tell there's a little bit of tarnish I guess you could call it on the cutters after you've used them and that will be taken off after you sharpened it so from that you should be able to tell when once you have gone all the way around another thing you can do is put just a little little drop of paint on the top of one of your cutters and some of your chains actually have paint already on them so that way you can tell when you have gone all the way around either way once you've gone all the way around you'll loosen up that wing nut underneath there swing this all the way around and then you are set to start working on the ones going the opposite direction and then once again you'll go all the way around on that side and sharpen it. It takes me about 15 or 20 minutes to do the entire process and that means for me that's sharpening all your cutters and then coming through with your gauge uh, depth adjuster and you set that over this part right here and then take a file and file them down so your gauge is at the proper depth. And you don't need to do that every time, but it is something that you'll have to do from time to time to make sure that your cutter is getting enough bite into your wood. One drawback with this particular cutter is that it has to be mounted on a bar. So some people will use maybe an old bar that they have and then mount that in a vise and that way if they have multiple chains they need to do they aren't having to switch it between you know uh, on the bar on the the chainsaw but it it's not really a fault it's just a, a drawback and so bars can get expensive and they have different uh, widths of the, uh, I'm not sure what the term is, but the part that sets down in the bar, that can, the, the pitch, I think it's called. And so I got to thinking, well, what if I kind of make my own bar? So this is what I came up with. And what I did is I got a piece of sheet metal from, I don't know, it was either the orange or blue stores, I'm not sure which one I got it from. I just kind of fashioned it from that sheet metal and it's got the groove in there so that it sets down in there right and it's got a little bit of play in it but that allows you to have put just about any chainsaw chain in it. Now normally I would have this setting up on something so that this chain uh, isn't just setting right on the, the ground here but I've got a limited camera space so I don't have it on there right now but this works just the same as if you had it on the bar and you can mount that right on there just the same as you would a chainsaw bar and it works really well 
you still have to take this on and off between each chain because the chain goes through there but you don't have to take off your bar so this can save a lot of time in that you can sharpen the one on your bar and if you have a couple other dull chains you can just throw them on this instead and it it really comes in handy um, I think the whole piece of metal cost me maybe 10 bucks and I used maybe half of it so about five bucks for this bar that I made and it'll fit pretty much any chain that you want to throw on there so this has really come in handy. I also realized I still had the box for this. And so this is the original packaging it came in. It's the Granberg File and Joint Model G106B. Right here, one of the best parts, made in the US. So that's, that's a big plus right there. Like I said, I've had it for probably, I've had this thing for maybe five or six years, so it's not like it's something that I just picked up the other day and I haven't really had time to really know how well it works. I know some people they'll make a review video for something after they've had something for a week or a month or something they haven't even had the time to really know the pros and the cons of it whereas I've actually had this for a while so I do know what I'm talking about for the most part and <laughs> so anyway that will be it for this video.